Hello! Today I want to talk about SPI receivers and the sort of options you've got for quads that use them, like this little Morbula 6. Now I was going to make this video a while ago based on some questions I had about people about what to use, but in the last few days I saw some forum posts and I watched a video uh, this morning from Josh Bardwell talking about Free Sky's uh, announcement of the release of ACC ST version 2 which they've put up as this little like oh really there's there's problems with uh, version 1 that everyone's been using for the past seven years without a problem and you should update that way we get our encryption on and no third party receivers will work including um, anything that uses d16 in these little SPI receivers so it goes without saying don't update that don't fall into the trap of uh, FreeSky pretending there's a problem to force people to update. I don't, I don't know what's the matter with FreeSky lately. They used to be one of my favourite companies. Now they seem intent on making everyone hate them. And if people forget about disliking them, they'll put out some press release like this just to make us really feel that hate even more and say, hey, what about a jumper radio instead? But anyway, going back to my original idea about why I wanted to make this video. Um, a bunch of guys in the UK or, or Europe basically that have been using the, the LBT or uh, EU firmware um, ping me in the past sort of few weeks and months just asking advice about what they should use to, to run one of these guys. So um, I've got loads of quads with these. This is the Mobula, this is a, a Beta FPV one. I couldn't find the little Meteor but this is, you know, you get the idea. Mostly in whoops. Um, I don't particularly like them in outside quads because the range is not very good, but for flying indoors in sort of sports hall, doing races and, and things, ideal because you don't need a separate receiver. It's all built on the flight controller. Um, it's all code within beta flight. Good stuff. The problem is that if you're using the EU or LBT firmware, you haven't got uh, the D8 uh, a standard. But I did make a video about how to do that. Go over here. But in order to do that, you need one of the older radios. We say old radios. Um, the original X9D, my x Lite, the X7, all good. However, if you've got one of the newer radios, which has the access badge here, this is the, I'm going to say it's the X9 Lite Pro. I can't remember the name of it. But there's now the Q7 access. There's the X9D 2019 edition. These use Access, and Access uses a completely different internal RF module. It can do D16, it can't or it won't do D8, and there's no way of putting that back in. So it's fine if you're an FCC flyer, because you would have had D8 from the get-go with your old radios, and with these new radios you just set the radio to D16. You'd set the protocol in the SPI receiver to FreeSky X, and you can bind it and go. However, on the LBT firmware, the FreeSky X is equivalent to an, an FCC receiver, so the two will not bind together. So there are a few options about what you can do if, you, if you've got a radio like this, and you've got one of these guys and you need to bind to it, um, what can you do? So you can't use D8 and you can't use FreeSky X because that's wrong, so you've got three options. So I thought I'd run through all of them. Some are easier than others, some take a bit more involvement, but here are all the options that I know about and you can decide what's good for you. So option one is a multi-protocol module. I got this one from URUAV, others exist. I think um, iRangeX is a, is a big one. This had a particular problem that um, I needed to do some soldering on in order to update the bootloader to stop it crashing on certain things. But it will give you um, both D8 uh, and you can also run D16 in both FCC and LBT uh, modes, all from this little module, irrespective of what type of um, radio you've got and what region it's on. So that's quite good, but obviously this is extra. Um, you get some benefits from it, of course. You get to fly all sorts of things. You bind to pretty much anything. But um, it'll do the job, but you'd have to pay. So that's, that's not so great. Another option, which I only just uh, found out about recently, which is why I wanted to tell people, because other people may not have noticed, is there's a new SPI protocol. So in earlier versions of Betaflight, we've just had two SPI protocols for FreeSky. FreeSky D, which is the D8 mode, and FreeSky X, which is the D16 mode, or the FCC version. But on Betaflight 4, and I think it's 4, I checked this out and I couldn't pin it down to a specific version of 4, you have... Um, FreeSky underscore X underscore LBT, which is, as it sounds, is a D16 
D16-based protocol that will work on an LBT radio. The only limitation, of course, is you need to have uh, an up-to-date version of Betaflight on your little Whoop, and your configurator should be up-to-date as well. But that will let an LBT radio fly this in D16 mode. Previously, I've been sort of against D16 mode because there was big CPU overheads and it tended to lock up, but there have been some improvements there and you should get a reasonable flight out of D16 now. I, I would still just say keep it inside because I do not trust the SPI protocol outside because the range just isn't good enough. However, I do know that many of all these whoopy things, I'm only holding up two, I've got a big bunch of them over there, they, they generally tend to come with um, be to flight free dot something for some reason. I don't know this because earlier on it was very hard to get a, a good tune on whoops on version 4 upwards or they're just lazy and haven't updated the boards and I know lots of people get a little bit nervous about updating beta flight uh, because it, it feels like a big thing. I mean it's it's not too bad to do but if you don't want to do that there is a third option, option number three um, and that is temporarily change the region of your radio. Now this you think would be a big deal. If you ever had to do it on something like the X9D, it's a case of flashing the internal module with the FCC or the LBT firmware and then everything is fixed on that unless you flashed it back again. And that would be a long and arduous process. However, what you might know about these uh, access radios is if you look at the firmware, there is not uh, separate FCC and LBT versions. They're all in the same firmware and the, the firmware seems to be set at point of sale of where you've bought it. So if you buy it from the UK you'll get an LBT version, if you buy it from America you'll get the FCC version. But kind of hidden away in the documentation there's a suggestion that this can be changed, you just have to contact FreeSky or your dealer and they might be able to sort it out for you. So you kind of think what is it? What, how does it change? And the answer is it's a simple Lua script and if you get hold of this Lua script, you can change it instantly. And if you take a look at the radio here, you can see it just literally goes from one to the other. There's not even pressing enter to, to do it. You just move over, you exit, you can go ahead and fly something on FCC, then you can move it back again. Of course, I'm talking about this in a purely theoretical point of view. I'm not looking at the legal aspects of it. That's up to you to figure out and decide if flying a whoop indoors is going to encourage the police to detect this, break down your door and take you away in cuffs, which I doubt, but you know, I say it anyway. Uh, the legalities is up to you to figure out, not for me. But you can get hold of this script and, and basically change this if you want to do like that. And I'll just demonstrate what this looks like just by doing it quickly on a, a, a normal D16 receiver so we can actually see the lights flash. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got my quad and I've got this X4R in binder mode. You can see the two lights there. And before anybody freaks out, I've actually powered the receiver with a separate battery and ESC here. So the actual quad's not powered. So not a problem with the props because I'm just using this to power the receiver. So what I've also got uh, is my radio. And if I go to the... Uh, ISRM mode. I've dropped it into the tool so I can just do like a single click there. It's currently in LBT or EU. So if we try and bind this I would expect it not to work. Let's find out. So we've got the, the two lights there. And we've got nothing happening. Two lights are both on. So if we then go again back to our tools page and we change the mode to FCC, just X out and then we go back in and we try that again. So we've got, you can see the two red lights there. And let's say we want to bind. You see we've got a straight away we've got a flash. So if I just power this off and on, get a nice sort of green. So and if we were using LBT, we could literally just fly that, go back into the menu. 
and change it back again. And we don't... Telemetry loss. Obviously we lose telemetry because we, we're no longer bound. But one thing I want to say is just because we're moving back and forth, we don't necessarily lose the settings. You can see, because we're back in uh, LBT mode, we've lost the, the bind there. But it's not like we have to rebind or anything. If I just go back to... Oops, come past it. Change, and I go and say, let's change it back to FCC. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry is instantly recovered, and we've got the green light. So it's not like you have to go and rebind everything and change all your models. It's it's pretty simple, but that's that option. So the script is called ISRM underscore mode dot Lua, um, and if you did a quick search for it, you'd probably find it on the internet. There is um, I wrote a little blog post to go with this, and there's a link here. Um, if you visited my website recently, you will notice the SSL certificate expired. I've now changed hosting companies, so everything is nice and the evil company that I used to, which wouldn't allow me to use a free SSL certificate, has been kicked to the ground and we've got a nice new one, which does, so ha to them. So hopefully I'll be doing a few more updates occasionally. Anyway, I've, I've put the link to a script there. If you install it in your tools directory, you'll have instant access to it and you can just flick back and forth. So yeah, those are your three options. If you're in uh, LPT world and you want to fly one of these little guys and you've got an access-based radio, those are your three options. I'm not saying which is better. Uh, probably if you can do it, the most convenient is obviously to be on Betaflight 4 Plus and use the FreeSky X uh, underscore LBT, but both of the other options work as well. There's a lot of advantages of getting a multi-protocol module. And for people that don't want to mess around with other things, just flick the firmware back and forth. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful and you guys can all carry on flying your whoops. Just stay away from the awful ACCST 2.0 update. Don't go anywhere near it. Boo to free sky. Thumbs down for you. Uh, I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.